Hey everybody, how's it going? Ponchezy from Posing Ain't Easy coming at you with a tutorial video on how to create a word bubble like this for cutouts. Now, traditionally, word bubbles have text, you know, within the borders of the cutout because, you know, that's normal. But if you want to have somebody screaming something right here, I have the word no being screamed out like this uh, to really give it some extra weight and some extra gravity. Uh, it's really cool to have it, you know, bursting out of the word bubble like this. And right here, not only can you see that it's bursting out of the word bubble, but there's still a outline of the word bubble around this. And that's what I'm going to be showing you today in today's tutorial video. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so starting off fresh, you're going to want to figure out what you want your cutout to say. So head over to the text tool right here and just you know, type whatever you want. Uh, I'm just going to go with no for now, just for this video. Pretty simple, pretty easy, simple and sweet. Uh, let's just take one of these O's away. We don't need that many. Anyway, so uh, you can just have it normal like this, but I like to, you know, add a little, a uh, little bit of flair to it, you know, spice it up a little bit. So let's go over here to the warp tool, uh, warp text tool. And you can choose any one of these styles, whatever you want to do. There's some funky stuff in here like shell upper or uh, this would look cool for an explosion effect right here. But for today's video, we're just gonna be sticking with arc right here. You can mess with all these options, bend, horizontal distortion, vertical distortion. Uh, I like to keep my bend right in the middle for cutouts because it's straighter. You don't want it arcing and having a lot of negative space in there. Um, but it just depends on the different cutout. We're just going over one today. So we're just gonna set the horizontal distortion right here as well as the vertical distortion. Kind of make it look a little bit funky like this. So uh, from here, I like to just go ahead and make it horizontal to the cutout. And I just did that by pressing Control T to transform it and then just make it straight like this right here. So after that, let's go ahead and work on the word bubble. So just go ahead and create a new layer right here and make sure the layer is below the text layer right here. Uh, you can mess around with the shape tool, creating an elliptical tool and stuff. But since there's a lot of trial and error to get the word bubble right, I like to just mess with the marquee tool right here because it's a lot easier. So the marquee tool will default on the square. So just click and hold it. You can go over to the elliptical marquee tool right here. Now, a lot of people sometimes are thinking maybe you just want to get the whole thing in here but um, we're going for a more dynamic thing. So um, try and make it a little bit more tighter, more compact, and you're not gonna get on the first try. So just keep on messing around until you get like the kind of feel you want. And then I think I'm good right here for what I wanna do. So after you get everything right, just go ahead and head over to the paint bucket tool right here, and then select the white color as your normal color, and then just fill it in right there perfect looks pretty cool now next what we're going to want to do is just make the stem for the cutout right here and then for that we're just going to create a new layer right here and then head over to the polygonal lasso lasso tool i uh, just want to click the lasso tool right here click and hold and you'll get to the poly polygonal lasso tool can't talk today uh so make sure you click off of that right there with the uh, marquee tool so you have a brand new thing and like a lot like the marquee tool just go ahead and experiment until you get a cool um <laughs> not a cool thing but keep on experimenting until you get to where you want to be with the stem it's going to take you know some trial and error but eventually you'll get the hang of what you want to do so not there All right, that works for me. So just like we did previously, head over to the paint bucket tool and just go ahead and fill it in. Now you can do this on the same layer, but sometimes uh, there'll be a thin line of where it didn't fill in between the circle and the new selection you did. So I like to just do it in two separate uh, layers. So by holding shift or control, it doesn't matter. Uh, select both layers, make sure one layer is selected, then hold control, control is ideal. And then select the layer right below it. You'll highlight both, right click, and then merge layers. Now, the one thing we're gonna wanna do before we head over to the final step is just double click on the text layer right here, and then you're gonna come up with layer style. Now keep this in mind because we're gonna be using this uh, later on as well. So just head over to stroke right here, and then from stroke is gonna default on black, make sure you put it, you set it to white. And right here you can start to see that the outline starts emerging. And you can make it as however big or small you want it to be. Uh, I try and make a good middle ground right here. Uh, I set it to four or either five, it doesn't matter. And then just click okay. 
And next, you just want to go ahead and flatten the image. So, like I said, uh, hit Control, select both layers, right click, merge layers, and then they're now merged. And do the exact same thing, right click on it and go back to layer style and then hit stroke again. But this time, leave it at black and there you go. It's perfect. It works out perfectly. And there you can have your stroke outside of it. And here you can see that uh, the word bubble is white and then the text is spilling outside of the word bubble. But uh, the whiteness of the word bubble conforms around the text and kind of gives it a more dynamic feel and stuff. Now for this stroke, you can set it to however thin or thick you want it. Um, but since you're going to be cutting this out, you should leave a little bit of room for you know mistakes and human error. So I like to set it a little bit thicker than it's normally going to be. So uh, in case I do make a mistake, there's a little bit of wiggle room. So just click OK and you're good to go. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick tutorial. This isn't just for Photoshop, even though it is ideal you do it for Photoshop because this tutorial obviously was in Photoshop. But you can take these same tools and techniques and apply them to other imaging editing software. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys want to see more tutorial videos like this uh, pertaining to techniques for ACBA and stuff, just let me know and I'll, I'll be happy to go ahead and make some more videos like this. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.